the common man introduces, as ever, an uncommon lineup of people. Sticking with this season's theme of actor, writer, and musician, we have a glittering lineup for you two nights. Actually, we have a glittering lineup for you three nights. Joining me this evening are the actor, Sir Tony Randolph. Writer and knighted in this year's honours list, Sir Tom Seymour, and the musician, composer, and lyricist, Sir Tim Rice. <laughs> My first guest needs very little introduction, so what I do give should at the least be accurate. I've described him as an actor, but with his book finding itself on last year's bestseller list, he should also be described as an author. His autobiography, from Hackney to Hollywood, has been described by the Times literary critic as funny, self-effacing, honest and natural. All, I'm sure you'll agree, adjectives that could be readily ascribed to him. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Tony Randolph. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was nice. That was nice. Aren't you used to applause then? Quite frankly, no. I haven't been on stage for donkey's years, and you don't get applause on film sets. Unless, of course, you trip over something or fluff your lines. In which case, the crew are always on hand to extract the proverbial. <laughs> are you known for? Come to think of it, I have been hearing more applause on sets lately. Unintentional bloopers? I must be working for forgiving directors. And speaking of which, you've worked with some of the best. Oh God, yes, I've been lucky. I'm my last three films. Michael Mann, Martin... Oh. Scorsese? <laughs> Scorsese. Am I fluffing my lines already? <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> and of course, the delightful Ron Howard. You don't entertain third raters? No, apparently not, but... Perhaps they do. <laughs> Am I hearing that Tarantino has you in his sights? Oh, I do hope so. I've met Quentin a few times, and if he can conjure up a part for me, if he's willing to take on a third rater, then <laughs> that would be marvellous. You never quite know what he's going to do next. Third raters don't get Oscar nominated. <laughs> I'll announce now that Tony's been nominated for his part in Broken County. I believe you have a clip. Yes. You play Denny Jackson. Father of a young man who's committed a murder, and you... I put my hands up to it, yes. So that your son, who's just become a father himself at the age of... Nineteen. Nineteen, can have a chance at life with his son. Set in the 1950s South, this sequence shows Denny on the phone to his son. He's going to the electric chair tomorrow. It's powerful stuff. Let's take a look. You've got two minutes, Jackson. Thanks. Two minutes. Right. Hi, son. Now, don't you say nothing. This is being recorded. If you say anything, I'm putting this earphone down, you hear me? Yeah, I know, I know. Just be quiet a moment. Be quiet a moment, son. Now, you listen. You change them diapers, because that there, that don't last long. And if he's a hollering at night and his mama's tired, then you go to him. You pick him up. You rock him and you sing to him. Because that don't last long either. But when that fella's big enough to hold a fishing rod, you bait his hook. You make sure he can catch all the fish he can in life. And if he falls, you put a band-aid on his knee. You put a band-aid on everything for that boy. You make him brave. You make him brave so that he ain't scared to fall because he knows if he does, that you and his mama, you're going to be right there to pick him back up again. Teach him right from wrong. Get his head in there, but you get his head right. No, no, son, be quiet. Be. I love you, son. I guess I didn't need both them minutes. And both your county goes on release. Uh, next January, so 2006. And we wish you all the luck for Best Actor. Supporting Actor. And <laughs> competition is fierce. I mean, if I don't have to get out of my seat, then I shall force a smile. I shall clap. Well, I can. 
I'm an actor, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd like to talk about your book. Uh, you describe how your mum was a single parent and your dad... Yes, she was, and uh, he left before my first birthday. So your father was... Uh, I'm told he was a merchant seaman. Um, he and my mother together were only together for about 12 months. He wasn't Randolph, was he? Uh, no, that's my mother's name. I decided early on that I wasn't going to spend my life carrying the name of someone who, well, quite frankly, hadn't carried me. And you describe in quite upsetting details how your mum became a heroin addict while you were living in Hackney. Yeah, yeah she died when I was about... Overdose? When I was about 10 years old. Tragic. Oh, come on, Faye. We don't have to put the audience through this. We'll have them reaching for their Prozac. It's all in the book anyway. Painful. Well, yes, but I was, I was lucky enough to be fostered and I found a couple of people that I've called mum and dad for, well, longer than I care to remember. Um, in fact, they're here this evening. Ah, everyone, my mum and dad. I owe them everything. And you live in Beverly Hills now? It stops me being late for work. <laughs> <laughs> my my mum and dad, they, uh, they encouraged me to get a paper round. It taught me punctuality. In fact... They've taught me lots of lessons in life. I keep asking them to come over and live with us, don't I? <laughs> but they won't. But I do insist that they spend every Christmas with us. <laughs> Shall I tell you who loves these two almost as much as I do? Johnny Depp. Uh, oh. <laughs> they do. And it was your foster mum and dad's love of amateur dramatics. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, they were very much into Amdram in Northampton, where I was brought up. Uh, some of it must have rubbed off. <laughs> now, those of us of a certain age will remember you in the early 80s on British TV. The man in the black bag. Fondly remembered. You played the mysterious chameleon Sebastian. Great fun. And Roger Dawes, now Sir Roger Dawes, of course. The debonair Dr Benjamin Best. Whatever happened to Roger? <laughs> You know, I'm not sure. Last I heard, he was very much into martinis of some sort. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I, me and Rog, great friends, keep in touch all the time. <sighs> Absolute clown, always pulling stunts. Uh, yes, you've given us plenty of examples in the book. <laughs> Have we mentioned Hack from Hackney to Hollywood, available in all the best bookshops? Man in the Black Bag was written by... Uh, Tom. So Tom Seymour, we'll be bringing him on later. I wouldn't leave it too much later. Oh, why? Is he...? Relaxing. <laughs> and uh, you and Tom first met... Oh, oh, I was very young. I had a part in The Arms and the Man. Uh, Bernard Shaw? That's right. Uh, and Tom was in the audience. He was casting? He was, for Hide Behind the Curtain. <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> it was funny. He came bowling into my changing room, completely uninvited. And he said, my boy! He said... If you can follow the advice in the title as much as possible, I think I may have a part for you. <laughs> and did you? I, I must have done. Because at the end of the run, he came to me and he said, you know, they were only applauding the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> he still has them. Really? Oh, God, he keeps everything. Uh, they're hanging in his house, uh, in the den. So it was curtains for Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was. But he's a very good writer. But more importantly, he's a very very dear friend. Mm. And that may be a nice segue to introduce my next guest. But before I do, ladies and gentlemen, Sir Tony Randolph. <laughs> my next guest has his origins at what can only be described as the opposite end of the social spectrum. Born and raised in a village in Surrey, he attended the Royal Grammar School in Guildford, where he edited the school magazine and developed a taste for the classics and drama. He went on to gain a double first from Oxford. In fact, he and Andrew Lloyd Webber share the same alma mater. In the 1980s, these creative spirits had hegemony in the West End. Often described as the revivalist of the twisting country house thriller, picking up the mantle of Anthony Schaffer and others. Though he never garnered transatlantic appeal, many of his stage plays were subsequently adapted for British television. We have here a clip from Laughing Matter. A woman and her lover have conspired to drive her actor husband mad to take over his estate. Let's take a look.
Ciao, Grimaldi. You're an ice. <laughs>
I'm waiting for the audience to grow up. Yes, and speaking of growing up, your autobiography, See More Clearly, has just been released. In it, you describe your childhood in the idyll of a leafy Surrey village, which couldn't be further from Tony's poor background. Yeah, I've, I've lent this some consideration. Yeah, Social and economic deprivation, and I've come to a conclusion. Yeah, I've established that really, at the most fundamental level, very few people can afford to be poor. <laughs> <laughs> the point I was trying to make was that Tony's success wasn't guaranteed, was it? Whereas you, if you hadn't gone into writing, you'd have undoubtedly ventured into another profession. What do you think you'd be doing now? Uh, teacher, uh, lecturer. <laughs> He's a lecturer now. <laughs> well, I am Antonio, but class isn't paying attention. Uh, we're going to have to go to a break. Did, did you know um, that an anagram of Lloyd Webber is wobbly elder? <laughs> uh, so that, that's rather how I see him. Uh, or, as I alluded to earlier, uh, by word, the L. Oh, you've a cruel tongue, Tom. <laughs> Fabiana Letts. Go on. Inflates a bat. <laughs> We're going to go to a break. <laughs> I, was, I was pondering this while um, your heavily tattooed production assistant uh, was finding me a glass in, in lieu of the polystyrene cup she'd given me. Uh, I said I wanted to drink not rinse. Yes, we're going to go to a break, after which we'll bring on Tim. Or you could, you could be banal fatties, mm, or flatten a bias. I'll try to. Ladies and gentlemen, the unstoppable Sir Tom Seymour.